Hello, everyone. We'll just give everyone another minute or so to join us. So if you can just hang in there. All right, well, we have a lot to dive into, so why don't we go ahead and, and get started. Welcome to the third session in our webinar series. For those of you who've been with us since sessions one and two and now three, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to chat with us about all things social. We do ask, as we have in the past, that for the duration of this presentation, that we keep, uh, that everyone stays muted. Uh, if you have any questions, though, please feel free to utilize the Zoom chat function. You can submit your questions there to the panelists, and we are happy to address those questions as we enter the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. The presentation will also be recorded, so don't feel like you have to write everything down. We will go ahead and send a video recording of the presentation via email uh, following the session today. So. Let's go ahead. Awesome. So yes, today's webinar, today the topic is social media advertising deep dive. This is something we've been wanting to do for quite some time. We haven't um, always had enough time to dive into this variety of content uh, in our social media boot camps in person because there's just so much to talk about. So pretty high level and pretty quickly, we're going to dive into how to make a plan and how to approach your content strategy when it comes to social media advertising. We're going to talk about building that campaign and also testing and optimizing. So lots to dive into. Let's go ahead and get started. Perfect. Josh, so hi everyone, Mackenzie here, um, echoing Josh's sentiment. Thank you for joining us for um, our last uh, webinar session today. Uh, the first step, um, you know, within our social ad strategy or paid ad strategy um, is really is really similar to our organic content strategy. We really need to make a plan for what we're prioritizing our paid spend on and how to effectively use your dollars to, you know, reach those business goals that you do have. So you really want all of these things in place um, before you start building that message, um, before you start developing those creative assets, and before you, you know, eventually move to that campaign build. Um, so where to start? Obviously, making the plan. Um, it's really simple in nature. You know, these are just the four things we recommend outlining first thing and right up front. Step one, um, you really want to set up that goal. Um, paid social can do, you know, everything for you. So you really want to prioritize what it can do and what you're really hoping to achieve. You'll want to choose your platform. Um, I will say we'll spend the majority of, you know, the presentation discussing Facebook and Instagram advertising, um, but we'll, you know, provide a little insight into Twitter and Pinterest advertising as well. Um, determine budget uh, and campaign length. So budget really kind of determines, uh, you know, one, what, what that goal is and, you know, how long this campaign can run. And then lastly, building your audience. So, you know, um, based on what that objective is, we'll, we'll kind of go through, um, you know, the, the size of your audience and how to best build that. So once you do get to the final build stage, you are all set to go. Um, to start, we do want to highlight just the, um, just the overarching marketing funnel. Um, so we'll touch on this briefly and you'll, you'll kind of hear, um, these three call outs throughout the presentation. Um, but really starting here, will kind of help you determine what your campaign objective should be based on the goal you have set. Um, so, you know, kind of when we're looking at the upper funnel, I would say a majority of social media advertising kind of falls within this. It's really kind of within that inspire and engage phase that said, um, if you do have, you know, a booking engine or, you know, a path to purchase on your website, there are definitely ways to, you know, kind of add that conversion and, and get, you know, revenue from, from your paid social ads. Um, so within that inspire, we're really speaking to a broad audience where we're really just looking to create awareness of who we are and what we do kind of going into that engage phase. Um, this is where, you know, you start to kind of narrow that audience a bit, 
you know, these are people who are aware of you, what your business is, but haven't, you know, maybe made that consideration. You haven't added you to their consideration set yet or made a decision um, about, you know, who you are and how they'll engage with you in the future. And then convert. So again, at this point, your audience is really narrow. Um, these are people who have begun to consider you or even, you know, past purchasers or past visitors. So now's the time to really target them with really specific message um, to, you know, kind of close in on that deal. Okay, so moving on from the funnel, we're then going to look at your business goals. So what priorities do you have and how can paid social help you reach those goals? Um, I'd say overall, it's really important to focus on one goal per campaign. Um, again, uh, if you're, you know, if you have a campaign for website traffic and you're seeing low engagements, that's okay because you know, you're not optimizing for engagements, you're optimizing for website traffic. So you really wanna be super specific in what that goal is and set your expectations to align you know, with what, what you're seeing in terms of your results. So these are kind of the top objectives um, we really look at and are kind of the bigger priorities. Um, this little chart you'll see on the right. So this is you know, kind of when you click that create new campaign within Facebook Business Manager, this is what you'll see. Um, so first, when we look at brand awareness, this can mean kind of those reach and brand awareness campaigns you see on the left. Uh, but this is, can also include engagement and video views. So again, those are those broader audiences. You want to engage with your content, watch your videos, um, do all of that, you know, kind of high level awareness um, engagement. We'll then go into website traffic. So these are people you want to visit your site. You want them to explore more, read more, learn more, and just kind of ultimately see what you're about. Um, lead generation. So this is just collecting leads from Facebook and a lead can be anything that, you know, people need to sign up for. So is that a vacation guide or a, a pamphlet of some sort that, you know, you mail out? Is that, you know, an e-news um, that you want new subscribers for? Um, so anything where people kind of need to sign up to receive more information, that's kind of what we're bucketing into lead generation. And then revenue. So, you know, having those book now messages um, and using kind of those conversion metrics that you see over there on the right-hand column of this image. Okay, <clears throat> so um, as mentioned, we'll you know, primarily focus on Facebook and Instagram, but if you are exploring new platforms, um, here are a few questions just to keep in mind. So you really want to um, focus on these questions when you're choosing where to spend your money. Um, so one, where is your audience? Um, if you have, you know, kind of a large audience, a larger audience on Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, potentially that's why you're exploring that metric um, <clears throat> or that platform. And especially not even just what your audience is, but, you know, you know, kind of where um, those larger audiences predominantly lie within those social platforms uh, to how your objective matches the platform. So if you, you know, are wanting a conversion campaign, you're looking for, you know, an increase in room nights, you have that book now CTA, you most likely won't, won't want to look at Pinterest because, you know, that that platform's really for inspiration and saving content, you know, for future planning or for future use. So um, really making sure you have that objective, you have that goal in place before considering what platform to use, because sometimes those two might not match up if you, if you have a picture in your head. And then where does your best content live? So, you know, while we'll be talking about paid today, um, you really want to make sure you have an active presence on whatever channel you're also promoting content on, primarily because a lot of people, especially when you have those broader audiences, they're going to click through to your page. They're kind of, they're going to, you know, want to explore a little on your page and see your content, you know, potentially follow you or like you um, just so they can kind of learn more and see more from you in the future. So you really do want to ensure you kind of have um, that robust organic to back up any paid strategy you have. Okay, so why Facebook? Um, again, like I said, we do really want to kind of focus on Facebook. Um, it is important to note, <clears throat> excuse me, when I mention Facebook, I'm also including Instagram because Instagram is owned by Facebook and their paid capabilities are rolled into one platform. So that's really the biggest reason. I mean, you have access to the two largest social networks within, you know, one ad campaign within one budget, which is just a huge plus for your dollars. Um, so nine times out of 10, you know, you will find that Facebook is the strongest place to invest your paid social. Um, so why? 
again, that ability to reach your audience across Facebook and Instagram, you can really target your audience at the right place at the right time. So you will see this when we go into campaign build, um, but we strongly recommend, you know, kind of opening your ads on Facebook to extend to Instagram or vice versa. Um, Facebook's machine learning does a really great job of, of, you know, kind of monitoring your audience, seeing where they're spending their time and, you know, serving those ads appropriately. So they're doing the work for you. Um, so you really want to make sure you're kind of opening it, opening your ads up to those possibilities. Um, obviously, the platform's large collective reach. So um, with Facebook, there's about 1.6 billion people who use the platforms every day. So with that, your audiences are just bound to be larger than, you know, what you could potentially reach on other platforms. Um, and lastly, Facebook has the most robust list of ad types and the strongest audience metrics in place. So um, pretty soon we'll start to take a deep dive into audiences and you can kind of see what I mean. Um, but they're really at the forefront in terms of types of ads you can build as well as types of audiences that you can build. Okay, so you know, you've determined your objective, you've decided what platform you're building your campaign on. Um, now it's time to really ensure you have the right tracking in place. So pixels are really, you know, important, especially for those kind of lower funnel tactics. If you're driving people to your website, if you are, you know, wanting to do those conversion campaigns that we mentioned, um, it's really essential to have this pixel in place. So each social network offers pixel capabilities. Um, you'll be able to find, you know, where to add your pixel for Facebook, um, Pinterest, Twitter, um, they all have them. So across all of those, you do still have, you know, this, this richer metric that at your, cap at your, you know, at your disposal. Um, so what a pixel is, is really just a small piece of code. Um, it's a, it goes right, you know, kind of within your website code. Um, it's just a snippet of HTML. Um, and it's generated right within each of those platforms. So it's really simple to generate. Uh, and the you know, biggest uses, like I said, are retargeting. So bringing back website visitors, you can reconnect with previous visitors who have you know, visited even certain pages. So you can get that granular with your pixel, added items to a cart, uh, maybe didn't complete a purchase. So you could you know, get really granular with retargeting on that. Um, as well as completing that purchase. So you know, past visitors and grouping them into that specific category. As well as finding new leads or customers. So we'll get a little more into look like audiences shortly. Um, but with this, you're able to, you know, kind of create these audiences who have similar behaviors to reach people who resemble some of your best customers. So building this pixel. Um, like I said, it's very simple to generate. Um, within Facebook, we're calling out Facebook specifically here, um, but you'll just go to, it's called events manager within your Facebook ads manager. Um, you'll click that. If you don't have a pixel set up, you really just wanna click create pixel. Um, so you wanna create it and name it. You will wanna be specific. You don't just wanna call it pixel. You wanna call it, especially if um, you have multiple pi pixels per social platform, you, you know, we'll call out the platform. Um, you want to call out your business and just be really specific with what you're naming it so you know you, you don't forget um, what it's what its use is and what it's there for. Um, you then want to choose the option to manually install, which will take you to this first screenshot, the, the upper screenshot over to the right. Um, that will pull up your unique pixel code. So as the you know instructions indicate, you want to copy this code and paste it into your website header. So if you know you're maintaining your website. Um, you should be able to easily do that. Or, you know, if you have somebody else that does, you simply just copy all of this and send it their way and they should be able to easily implement. Once it's implemented, um, you know, you go back to your events manager page and you'll see the lower screen grab here. Um, you can see the data sources. So, you know, what pages your pixel's really firing the most on or where your audience is really going to. Um, and then just see overarching activity. So how many visits, um, you know, tracking, so what days it's, you know, really popping off and if that kind of correlates to any ads that you launch and things of that nature. Um, it's also really great to just check in to see if um, things aren't running. They're good about, you know, kind of popping up errors if, if something just might not be working correctly or needs, needs a little more attention. Um, and then lastly, if you do use Chrome, uh, Facebook has a really nifty tool. It's called Facebook Pixel Helper. Um, you can just Google Facebook Pixel Helper Chrome extension um, and you'll find it. You'll be able to easily add that um, to your little Chrome, 
Chrome search bar um, and you can just click that when you're on your site and just kind of confirm that, you know, your pixels on that page, it's firing correctly. So it's a really easy way to kind of just, um, you know, monitor your pixels, you know, when you're on your own site without even having to go into ads manager. Okay, so now you have your goals, you have your objectives, you know where you're advertising. Um, that pixel is all set up for future campaigns. Um, now we really want to look into budget, which I know can be confusing at times. So we've, we've tried to break it out as simplistically as possible um, because budget really will dictate the length and ad type for your campaign. Um, if you have a smaller budget, you know, you really want to stick to um, a few of those upper funnel tactics because, you know, you won't have the breadth or the length of a campaign that's really needed to, you know, kind of get into some of those deeper conversion tactics like purchases or lead gen. Um, another thing to kind of note, when we're talking about budget, we are talking about lifetime budget, not daily budget. Um, we really recommend looking at budgets from a lifetime spend versus a daily spend um, and, you know, kind of building your campaigns in that way. Um, and really because, again, that Facebook machine learning that's so great, that lifetime budget, once you set it to that, um, their learning can really optimize your spend and delivery based on audience performance. So just another way to, you know, let Facebook do some of that hard work for you. So kind of breaking it out into these tiers, we have 100 to 500. For that, we'd, as we'd recommend, you know, a campaign length between one to five weeks. So if you're, you know, kind of at that $100 spend, we'd really look at a campaign that's probably, you know, a week in length. Um, and then, you know, kind of sticking to that promoted content or that video views type content, again, within kind of the awareness metrics that you've set forth, um, and, you know, making sure that your goals align with your budget, with the campaign length and with the ad type that you can run. When we're looking to the middle tier of that, you know, 500 to 1000, that's when we can add on kind of a few more of those, you know, kind of middle tier tactics such as, you know, website traffic or even event RSVP ads. So if you do have something that requires an RSV, you know, RSVP, even whether it's, you know, virtual, um, as many things are nowadays, um, once you get into that, you have a bit, you can have a bit more time, you know, your ads have a little bit more room to breathe. Um, therefore, you can kind of, you know, build that audience and go for some, some deeper metrics. Um, that said, I should say, you know, anything, anything in the tier to the left. So, within, you know, kind of that middle circle, um, you can still do promoter content and video views with that larger budget if that's your goal. Um, you do not have to stick, you know, kind of within these realms. You just can't add on um, some of these deeper, deeper campaigns and deeper ad sets with the smaller budget to the left. Um, so then the last one, so if we're looking at, you know, say 1,000 to 5,000, we can then, you know, really kind of extend that to about two to five months. So, you know, really making that more of a, more of a long-term campaign which is typically needed for some of those larger goals like lead gen and conversions because it takes time to really narrow in on that audience, really make sure to build that up um, and, you know, allow Facebook to do some of that learning to optimize to those who are, you know, likely to sign up or make that purchase. So having the budget and the breadth to kind of um, promote this while also kind of giving, you know, Facebook the time to kind of optimize and, and do all of the learning um, about that audience on their end. Okay, so we've talked a lot about audiences. So now I want to get into, you know, who to actually target. So you want to use this information, you know, about your content and about your objective to, to really dictate your audience. So really consider the type of content you're promoting and how it aligns, you know, within that, that messaging funnel. So again, with that inspire stage, if that is an engagement or video views campaign, you really wanna make that inspirational content. At this stage, your audience is gonna be pretty big. Um, so that content should be fairly high level just to kind of gather, you know, and grasp that attention. Um, so really minimal CTAs. It's really just about, you know, kind of exploring you know, who you are, what you do. Um, once we get into that engage phase, um, here's where you can start to include, you know, more details about who you are, include some CTAs, you know, drive people to your site so they can learn more and explore on their own. And then once you get into convert, again, that's a very, very targeted audience. So content at this stage needs to be very specific to the audience you're, you're, you're talking to. And those CTAs also need to be, you know, 
really strong and really tailored to that audience. They can include, you know, special offers or discounts, especially if you have, you know, an audience of past visitors and, you know, you're, you're creating that custom audience, you're retargeting people who have visited you in the past, maybe, you know, within that group, you're offering, you know, a special offer or a discount specific to them. So we'll go into uh, Facebook audiences specifically. Um, and um, these are what, you know, kind of Facebook calls each of these groupings they have. So core, custom, lookalike. Um, core is probably, you know, a main focus, I would say, for, you know, everyone. Um, this is where you can really adjust your target audience to be as broad or well-defined as you'd like. So they have a lot of features within location, demographics, behaviors, interests, connections. Um, Facebook does a great job with, you know, within their keywords to create a lot of saved audiences that you can utilize. So we'll walk through how to build one of those next. Um, but once you get to custom, I know I've said kind of custom audiences a bit. So once you get there, you can really connect with people who've already shown interest in your business, whether they're loyal customers or just people who have visited your website. So again, that's when you can kind of get into some retargeting with site visitors or even contact lists. So again, like I said, uh, past visitors or even just everyone who, you know, opts in for your email. And then lookalikes. So we've mentioned this before. Each platform will offer lookalike capabilities. They kind of call it all something different, um, but, it, but it means the same thing. You're really just reaching people who are similar to your current customers. All you have to do is have that data source. So if we have our contact list of past visitors, we'll add that in. We'll say we want to create a lookalike of past visitors. And, you know, Facebook will really find those people who have similar capabilities and similar behaviors um, and create a custom list of, you know, of an audience that looks really similar to your current customer base. On the next slide, like I said, we will go into how to build a core audience. So you'll see kind of, you know, if you're not familiar, this is, you know, what you'll see within Facebook Ads Manager. Um, we'll show you how to create kind of these core audiences within Facebook Ads Manager. So when you get to the build section later on, you can kind of see where you can easily add these. So, you know, that stuff is done once you're in kind of the build portion of your campaign phase. Um, so the first option right here says reach potential travelers. Now you guys might not all have that. Um, I know for a while it was only available um, to certain advertisers. I think, you know, it was kind of prioritized to people who, who might be a little more um, active within the paid social space. Uh, if you don't have it, that's okay. If you do have it though, um, it's a really great option, you know, to prioritize delivery to people who may be planning to travel. So they might not have a destination, but they've really be, been, you know, putting in those indicators that they're searching for a place to go. Um, so I would always recommend turning that on. For this one, we are going to turn that on. Um, and then we're going to um, look at locations. So right here, if you go to the, or if you look at the kind of second image, um, you'll see that we want people, you know, kind of living in the United States, but within this, so we're going to look for people who are wanting to come visit us. Um, we're, you know, we don't have a staycation message or anything of that nature. So we really want to include, um, you know, people who are living in our area. Um, so I have gone ahead and excluded that. If you'll go to the next page, um, this is where we can add in those interests. So, um, you know, for this example, we're really looking for people who are interested in hotel deals. Um, so, you know, they're, they're people who are looking for travel. They don't know where they're going. So maybe they're searching um, for places to go. And also, you know, what deals are out there right now. So we want to hit those people with, with a really great deal we have. So I'm going to type in hotel deals. Uh, my other favorite, you know, kind of option is to, once you're in this search bar, and you can really type in anything to see kind of how big that audience is. Um, I always click suggestions, and I kind of just see what Facebook is suggesting for me. I see frequent travelers there. I do want frequent travelers. I want people who right now are really apt to travel and okay with doing so, um, and also looking for a good deal. So that's what my audience is going to be. Um, I would recommend you keep your keywords to five or under. Um, you don't want to get 
you know, too crazy with the amount of keywords you're including, or that really starts to narrow down that audience. Um, again, this is for kind of one of those upper funnel tactics. If you had a lower funnel tactic and needed a narrow audience, that's perfectly okay. Um, but for this, I would really recommend keeping, keeping your keywords to five or less. You'll then want to check that box. Oh, if you could go back. You'll then want to check that box that says reach people beyond your detailed targeting selections when it's likely to pr improve performance. This is again, Facebook doing its job for you. They are, you know, adding in other targeting metrics if they see that that audience will be really receptive to your ad. So always really important to click on that too, um, just so you can garner greater reach within, within your campaigns. So I've done all this. There's going to be an option that clicks save audience. Um, the next page will pop up. You want to save your audience. I'm naming this deal seekers. You can then review everything you just went through. So location, United States, we're excluding Fort Myers. Um, I did up the age to about 25. You can go even higher if you want to, but typically that 18 to 25 year olds, we, we kind of exclude from, from those within our, within our campaigns. Um, and then I have those people who match. I have my interests, I have my behaviors, I have my detailed targeting expansion on, and I will click save. And then that is there forever, that is done. So whenever I have a deal specific message, I know I can include my deal seekers audience. Um, and it's simple as that. And I don't need to go through this process every single time I want to use them or I have that message. So a really easy way to, you know, make sure you have those core audiences in mind, saved and ready to go for the build portion of your campaign. Okay, so we'll go into audience metrics for Pinterest and Twitter. Um, Pinterest audiences are fairly similar to Facebook. You have the interest, you have keywords, and then you have those audiences. So within interest, these are those promoted pins. You wanna get in front of people based on what they like. So if, you know, it's really by categories, if, you know, those people ping, you know, higher for different categories that they're searching, um, such as recipes or home decor, um, so really keeping it broad within kind of those larger categories that Pinterest has um, and serving those promoted pins, you know, to them within their home feeds. Um, keywords. So again, these are reaching people who are ready to act on what they find um, with those promoted pins targeting um, search results as well as their home feed. So within this, um, and if you are doing Pinterest advertising, this is kind of where we would recommend you go. Um, a lot of people, as you know, if you're a Pinterest user, um, not only are you exploring on your home feed, but most of the time you're going there to find, you know, something really specific to you or something you're wanting to search for, whether that be, you know, destination ideas, bucket list travel, or even, you know, recipe, easy weeknight recipes. So within keywords, you can really start to um, type in, again, it's, Pinterest makes it easy. Um, you just start to, like, you know, kind of type in things that resonate and they'll show, you know, kind of a drop down of what they offer. But within that, you'll be able to click, um, you know, kind of top search terms that they, you know, that they have and that they're allowing you to target. And you'll be able to, you know, target your pins to those people actively searching for some of these keywords. And then audience, so you're able to target, you know, your website visitor list, your customers um, from your e-news subscribers or people who have already engaged with your brand. So in that situation, again, most of the time you're, you're kind of using that pixel that's sp specific to Pinterest um, and creating these custom audiences based on the data um, they have collected for you. And then lastly, we're going to look at Twitter audiences. Um, I will say Twitter audiences um, are, are a bit more basic um, even than Pinterest and definitely, you know, a bit more limited and Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's really focused on keywords. So if you, you know, do have some sort of campaign tied to a timely event, you know, Twitter's a good spot for that. Um, you can really type in keywords based on conversations. So, you know, trending conversations, we know that's big for, for Twitter events, like I said, uh, movies and TV. So if, you know, there's something specific happening, um, you know, on a certain TV show or movie and you have a message tied to that, you can target based on that. As we know, a lot of people, you know, kind of live tweet a lot of big, you know, movies or television um, or award shows or things of that nature. And then interests, which, you know, is the same as kind of um, what we were looking at um, within that Facebook audience build example. And then again, their custom audiences are, you know, you can target followers. So, you know, kind of, a, kind of making a custom audience from followers 
as well as your, you know, e-news list or any email list you have, you know, past purchases or past visitors. So a little simplistic, but again, if you have something that's really specific to some of these timely topics that, you know, Twitter's strength is in, um, this is definitely, you know, the time to consider Twitter advertising. Okay, so now once we have all that in place, it's time to create content and I will let Josh take it away. Awesome, thanks Mackenzie. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about creating some quality content. So we're gonna walk through kind of some best practices per platform and we're gonna start with Facebook and Instagram. To Mackenzie's point, Facebook and Instagram fall under the same umbrella. So there's a lot of uh, similarities in terms of uh, best practices. So first and foremost, we wanna make sure that you're showcasing your brand early and often. You wanna be sure that your brand elements are coming through the creative that you've spent not only time on, but money and strategy. And you wanna be sure that whether it might be a static image or in a video or even just in text copy that the message you're hoping to convey is coming through. Next, you wanna design for sound off, but delight with sound on. And this is one of, I think the most important things and one of my favorite sayings because I think we can all probably think of a moment. We've been in public, maybe we're on a plane, we're on a train, we're in Target, maybe at a cafe. There's always that one person that has their sound on in public and you have no idea what, you're wa what they're listening to or what they're watching, but it's quite loud and quite disruptive. We've all probably been that person as well. So to that point, there's a lot of, lots of the time you're not going to listen or you're not going to watch, should I say, with sound on, but you want to make sure that if the person is, it makes sense and it's also conveying that message. You can have great visuals, but bad sound, a bad soundtrack or bad music, and it's not going to convey that message as strongly and vice versa. You want to capture attention quickly as well. On mobile, users are scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You have about 1.2 seconds to pull them in. This is something we've been saying for a couple of years now. You really want to use that eye-catching imagery or video to keep the audience engaged from the second they stop on your ad. So if you are using video, you want to keep it short. 30 seconds or less is what's going to perform best for these ad placements um, on Facebook and Instagram. And if it's specific to stories, 10 to 15 seconds is gonna be what works best. Um, you wanna build your ads where people are gonna, where people are gonna view them. So if you're you know, placing an ad in the Facebook feed, the recommended ratio is four to five. So that's kind of a square and that's kind of what you're seeing on the right hand side of your screen. However, if you're gonna be placing an Instagram ad, the recommended aspect ratio for that image is nine to 16. So in that case, we would say go vertical. So you wanna adapt your assets to how they're best going to look and then of course, engage with the audience. Next, some Pinterest best practices. Very similar here, you know, again, going with that vertical image, Pinterest recommends a two to three aspect ratio. And we're gonna talk a little bit towards the end of this segment about ways you can uh, tools you can use to adjust those images and adjust those aspect ratios to fit the various placements. But ultimately, once you have that image, you want to make sure that your brand is the focal point and you want to kind of avoid using very abstract images. Um, Pinterest, it's a great place to use text overlay because you want to give context and you want to be able to tell a quick story, but you are limited, of course, in that one panel of screen of everything you can do. So you wanna make sure that you're using language that encourages your audience, of course, to click through to learn more or to pin whichever you're presenting to them. But again, you wanna keep that language short and clear. This is social, uh, attention spans are short. And again, you are limited with that space. So making sure the language you are using is conveying the point you're hoping to get across. Twitter, I think one of the biggest things to remember with Twitter as a platform is it's built in the foundation of having conversations and promoting dialogue. So on Twitter, you wanna make sure that your message is super concise. You don't wanna include too much copy or too many hashtags that are, that are gonna clutter the message. You wanna be sure that you're being very clear in your call to action when appropriate, whether that's in this example, read the full story here, or if you're encouraging uh, bookings for a, let's say, a river cruise that you're, you know, encouraging the user to click through to purchase a ticket or to reserve their spa or whatever the CTA might be. You want to avoid writing copy in all caps. And I think this is very important because of going back to the foundation of Twitter, just being about conversations, if you're typing in all caps, it might come across a bit aggressive. So you want to be sure that you're communicating in a way that's 
pleasant, on-brand, and easily understood to a variety of users and also matches the platform. So let's avoid all caps. Again, keeping a conversational tone is really important. And, and one thing that I think a lot of people are, are doing um, is using emojis. Emojis add a, a playful flair when used appropriately to, to any sentence you might be saying. And that's no different for ad placements. If there is an emoji that you know, fits well with your brand, whether it's the sun or a palm tree, or maybe it's the cheers emoji if you're a restaurant and bar, you know, consider adding emojis in. It just makes it a little, uh, a little more playful and a lot of uh, millennials, as we'll say, really enjoy using emojis. Again, last but not least, make it timely. Um, Twitter is all about relevance and I think that is no different with your ads. You want to make sure that what you're putting out on Twitter is uh, just as much relevant to the time as it is to a conversation. So you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, you literally just told me I have to do something different for every platform. I don't have enough time or that's a lot of work. And it is. And the one thing is to know is you don't have to change your content 100% per platform. If you're, running an, if you're running an ad campaign that you've determined to achieve you know, a goal of X, Y, and Z, it doesn't have to, you don't have to have a different campaign per platform. And what I mean by that is you can take the same campaign that you might be running on Facebook and Instagram and tweak it a little bit to be able to run on Twitter and Pinterest. And so the biggest thing there is you want to make sure that your video or image, depending on what you're using for this ad placement, is sized appropriately. So if it's a four to five on Facebook and a, a three to nine on Instagram stories, well, we want to make sure that when you're launching it on a, a Pinterest that it's going to be that two to three ratio we referenced prior. So making sure we're adjusting those images when appropriate. You want to be aware that some placements are going to require text and then some aren't going to have any text. So you want to make sure that you're adjusting your creative appropriately there to convey that message or to convey that CTA. And you want to optimize your text. So if you're targeting the same audience, let's not serve them the same ad over and over again but let's make small tweaks where they might recognize the ad from seeing it prior and building that brand awareness. But ultimately, we don't want them to feel bored or to just go through it because they've quote unquote already seen it. So the next slide really talks briefly about kind of something that we're actually working on now at the Bureau to Promote Camping. And you can see you have three examples here. You have Facebook, Instagram stories, and Instagram as in the feed. So you can see we're using the same imagery. We're using pretty much the same text, but everything's a little bit different per platform. So two things to call out here. One, sizing, we keep talking about image size and the, the aspect ratio. So we've adjusted that. You can see though in the Instagram story placement, minus swiping up, we don't have text copy. So in this execution, we went ahead and we added text copy on the image in a tasteful and on-brand way to the campaign. To, to give further context, to tell a brief story, to entice the, the user to click through. So just briefly an example there. The next uh, screen is going to show how we've incorporated this to Pinterest as well. So this is living on Pinterest. This is living on Instagram, Instagram stories, and Facebook. And each execution is just slightly different. Um, but I think it's you know, important to note, you don't have to rebuild everything or launch a brand new campaign and use all new images. You, you can make subtle you know, tweaks to then target audience segments without having to reinvent the wheel every time. So next, this is a really good resource. Um, it's called Facebook Ads Guide. Give it a quick Google search if you're not familiar and go ahead and bookmark it. This is gonna be a really good resource hub for all things Facebook and under the Facebook umbrella and relevant to our conversation today, Instagram. And it really dives into kind of breaking down all that there is to advertising on those platforms because it's quite confusing and it's a great resource. So it's gonna to talk to you about design recommendations. So again, those image ratios that I keep referencing, recommended text length, um, the greatest asset I personally think with this platform or I found most beneficial is on the right-hand side of the screen where it says choose a placement. There are so many ad placement types across Facebook and Instagram. It can be hard to really understand what each looks like and how that's going to live and how it's going to interact with users. So 
uh, using this ads guide, you have the opportunity to really look through all of their ads. And each time you select a new one, Facebook is going to generate an example for you. And then it can show you how, to, how it will live in the feed or how it will live in the story and how users engage with it. So if you're a visual learner like myself, this is an awesome tool I highly recommend. This screen, this is actually, if you're with us during session number two, Mackenzie spoke to, here are a variety of free platforms that also have, of course, paid subscriptions associated with them. But these three uh, tools, if you will, um, are great resources if you're looking to resize images, if you're looking to create a social post, if you want to add text, text overlay, if you want to edit a video. Um, I personally use Canva quite often. I like Canva. I am a paid subscriber. Um, feel free to take a peek at um, Pablo Canva or even Adobe Spark and, and kind of, you know, get a gist of what might be useful to you. Of course, there's lots of resources out there. This, we're not saying you have to choose one of these three, but this is a place to start if maybe you're a little unfamiliar with sizing recommendations or adding text overlay. They have lots of images that you can choose from, lots of text treatments, lots of colors. You can upload your logos, upload your brand colors. It's quite, quite useful. So definitely recommend taking a peek. And last but not least, just some do's and don'ts or things to avoid. So you really want to use eye-catching imagery. You want to consider the platform that you're on. So if it's Facebook, Twitter, or perhaps Instagram or Pinterest, you want to adjust that creative as I had referenced prior to optimize your time, your spend, and the, uh, the impact it will have on the user. Check your links. This is really important. I know we all think our links are perfect, but I can tell you, even, even at the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel, sometimes our links are dated or perhaps a little slow to load. You want to make sure that Everything's up to date, active, and it's loading quickly. Users' intention spans on social is slim to none. So if, if it's taken quite some time to load, the chances of them after engaging with the ad and doing exactly what you hope they would do, the chances of them just exiting out and moving on if it's loading too slow are quite high. So you want to keep it short and to the point, and you want to know that your audience, you want to keep your audience in mind when developing these assets. What, what is working well for them in your organic content, and how can you move that into a paid, uh, a paid way? Some things to avoid, utilize, you don't really want to use image that, images that are heavily staged or too promotional. This is no new to the social conversation. Authenticity is what you should be running with on social media. You want to avoid using heavy uh, text copy or text overlay, should I say, on images across all platforms. Make sure it's tasteful and not taking up too much of the visual art that you're pushing out. And you really don't want to rely too much on that traditional brand imagery as referenced prior. So again, authenticity, just keep that in mind as you're going through. So that wraps up this section, I believe. And I'm going to go ahead and, and pass the baton on to Austin. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin. Um, I'm a colleague of McKenzie's. Um, and I, we assist, obviously, at the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel with their social media efforts. Um, so now that we have gone through sort of establishing your plan and looking through what your creative could potentially look like, it's time to actually build the campaign. And so as Mackenzie mentioned um, throughout, um, we're focusing mainly on Facebook and Instagram um, as we're looking at building a campaign, um, just because that is sort of where we would recommend focusing your efforts. It's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Um, and so once you have decided to build an ads campaign in Facebook, we recommend first uh, making sure that you're all set up on Facebook Business Manager. And this is a tool that Facebook has that allows you basically to have multiple individuals manage your business's Facebook page and manage ads for your page. And so some of you may already be set up on Business Manager, um, and some of you may not be, and that's totally fine. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, we do have steps outlined here. Um, as Josh mentioned, we'll be sending out a recording so you will be able to access this information, but you just go to business.facebook.com slash overview, create your account, and then enter your name for your business, your name, your work email address, um, click next, and then enter a few more details, and then you hit submit, um, and then you should be ready to go on Facebook Business Manager. So once that's all set up, then you can start going about uh, developing ads. And so in the next slide, we'll show you what Business Manager looks like. So this is 
the dashboard that you'll see when you jump into Facebook Business Manager. And specifically, this is the Ads Manager portion. Um, and as you can see, the, it shows you sort of what the ad is. Um, there's a lot of different columns and rows. Um, you can adjust those to show you different pieces of information, but primarily it's going to show you your campaign name, um, delivery, so it, it's showing off. Um, those will update, you know, if the campaign is off, it'll say off. If it's running, it says active. Um, there's also other sort of notes you can get there, such as scheduled or um, in review, depending on where you are in the process of building your ad. Um, it'll also show budget, or it might show that you're using a, a budget um, that's based on the ad set. Um, and then also shows various results, impressions, engagements, those sorts of things. And those will vary depending on what sort of ad you are running. Um, and so briefly uh, to touch on how this is organized as well, um, Facebook Business Manager is set up uh, with three different sort of levels. There are campaigns, ad sets, and then ads. Um, and the campaign is the umbrella for uh, multiple ad sets. Ad sets are the stage at which you might um, add in different targeting. So you would potentially set up an ad set that targets a more millennial focused audience, and then maybe an ad set that targets maybe an older audience. Um, so ad sets are really where you're going to differentiate targeting if you are targeting multiple groups. And then under your ad sets, you have your actual ads that are running. So uh, it's sort of a nice little Russian nesting doll. You have your campaign, and then under your campaigns are your ad sets, and under those are your ads. So now that you're in and you want to create your campaign, you hit that big green create button you see over there on the left-hand side of the screen. And you'll see this screen, which you may recognize from earlier in the presentation, um, that will have you choose an objective. And this is where you'll pull in your plan. So determining what it is that you're trying to do, whether that's um, drive traffic to a website or video views or engagement on a post, that sort of thing. So you'll select whichever one of those you would like to and then click continue. And then it'll take you to this screen. And as you can see over there on the left, um, it shows um, at the very top, engagement, October 2020, that is our campaign. And then underneath that is our uh, draft ad set. And underneath that is our, um, I'm so sorry. Um, sorry about that. Um, and underneath that is our uh, ad. And so when you enter your campaign name, um, this is a, where you'll you're going to want to make sure that you are staying organized. So the campaign name that we have entered here is Engagement October 2020. And so the way that we um, name our campaigns is engagement is our goal. So depending on your goal, that might look different. So maybe it says video views or maybe it says traffic. And then October 2020 is the month during which that campaign is going to run. Uh, there are multiple different ways to name your campaigns and whatever works best for you, you should run with. This isn't necessarily set in stone, um, but this is a good way to maybe think about it just to help you stay organized and keep track of your campaigns and your, your ads as you're moving forward. So then after you name your campaign, you'll want to set your budget. As Mackenzie mentioned previously, we do recommend um, going with a lifetime budget because Facebook's uh, uh, AI technology really does sort of allow it to learn and, and use that money most effectively when it's set to a lifetime budget. Um, you will want to make sure that this portion is set to lifetime budget because as you see, there is a drop down and daily budget is an option. It's very important to make sure that you don't accidentally select daily budget. Um, speaking from experience, it's not always fun when you get on and realize that your ad has been spending way more than you meant for it to. So after you've got all of that set up, your campaign, um, your biggest sort of umbrella of info that you need to put in is ready to go. And so now you're ready to set up your ad set, which is where you start to get a little bit more detailed in terms of your timeline and your audience. So it's also important to make sure that you're naming your ad set the way we have it named here. Um, so October highlights, so maybe that's sort of the um, some some of your top um, posts from October, that sort of thing. Um, and then we also have in here the audience, um, which is the current followers. In addition to that, 
We also have the budget uh, or the schedule. Um, so as you see, this is starting to run on October 19th and will run through the end of the month. In addition, when you're setting up your ad set, um, you'll also input your audiences at this stage. And so this is where you'll pull in any audiences that you may have already built, um, as Mackenzie walked you through earlier. Um, one of the items that she mentioned when building audiences was connections. And this is where you can pull in individuals who may have um, some sort of connection to your page. So you'll see that we have this drop down menu pulled up here. Um, and we recommend selecting people who like your page just to make sure that you're also reaching that audience of people that you know are interested in you um, and want to see your content. They've communicated that to you by liking your page. You'll see there are also some additional options, friends of people who like your page, or you can even exclude people who like your page um, if you know maybe that fits into your goal if you only want to reach people who maybe don't know about you. So there are a few different options there. We do recommend, as I said, people who like your page uh, to start with. So once your ad set is built, you've got your, you've got it named, you've got your budget in there, um, and you've got your audience. Um, you also wanna make sure that you are uh, taking a look at the placements. Um, and so as Mackenzie has mentioned, Facebook really allows you to target your ad very broadly. Uh, because it owns it's because facebook owns instagram and then also that it has other capabilities you can really really reach a lot of people and so when we're talking about placements we're talking about the different places that you'll be reaching people with this ad uh, facebook recommends as do we using automatic placements and you'll see actually when you go to build an ad that that is um what is the default choice um and so assuming that you have all of the necessary creative to um, upload for all of those different placements, we recommend going ahead with that. Where you might want to start to select manual placements and remove some options is if, say, you don't have creative that is specifically built for Instagram stories um, that isn't sized to that 9 by 16 ratio that Josh mentioned. So then you'd want to select manual placements. Um, and so once you select that below, you'll see the platforms that you can um, remove or add. So you can either remove entire platforms. So if you don't want it to show on Instagram at all, um, you could remove that or you can get specific and just remove certain placements such as, as we have here, stories. We've removed all Facebook stories, all Instagram stories and all messenger stories um, just because in this hypothetical campaign that we're running, we don't have uh, the creative for those. Additionally, one other piece that we recommend um, paying attention to here when you are determining placements, um, Facebook has what is called the audience network, which is essentially their web advertising uh, service. Um, so they can place ads just on normal web pages that exist outside of Facebook. Um, and we recommend checking here and um, selecting the limited inventory option when um, setting up your audience network preferences. Um, and as you'll see here, that limited inventory is really just sort of a brand protection measure to um, make sure that your ads are showing up in spots that you would want them to um, and alongside content that would be um, that would be friendly to your brand. And so once you have your campaign set up, your ad set all set up, then it's time to actually set up your ad. Um, so a few things to note here, we do recommend naming the ad as well. Um, and so in this case, we've set up, uh, we're using a, a really great destination image. And also make sure that you are pulling in the correct Facebook page and Instagram account to run the ad from. Um, some of you may have access to multiple pages within your business manager account. And so just make sure that it's actually running from the business that you're wanting to run the ad from. So just to recap very briefly, um, some do's and, and things to avoid when setting up an ad within Facebook Business Manager. We do recommend, again, setting up a business manager account to build those ads. Once it's all set up and you've clicked publish, just confirm that that ad is up and running based on schedule. It's just always good to double check your work, as I mentioned, you know, for instance, on the, the lifetime versus daily budget, sometimes things, um, you know, don't get selected properly the first time. 
Um, double check to make sure that your text, your image, and your link are all correct. Again, part of that process. And then also just make sure to review any notifications on the ad from Facebook um, and request any additional reviews if necessary. Facebook does flag some ads, um, sometimes correctly, sometimes incorrectly, as um, being around targeted around certain issues and just that can require a review. You want to make sure you avoid running too many ads at once, as well as um, dividing up small budgets across too many campaigns. If you've got a smaller budget, really, we emphasize putting that money toward um, a larger, um, one sort of larger effort. And then running ads with objectives that don't align with your goals for the campaign. So if your goals are to get um, a lot of video views, you wouldn't want to run, say, an engagement-based campaign. Um, and then also we avoid, recommend avoiding focusing on follower growth. That's um, not really a metric that Facebook or we recommend as um, a sign of you know, a healthy, strong page. Obviously you want a lot of people to like your page and your content, but at the same time, um, metrics like engagement and impressions showing that there are a lot of people who are actually interested in and engaging with your content are a little bit better to use as a measurement. So after you've done all of that and built your ad, uh, you want to make sure that you're continuing to check in on your ad and optimizing it as you're moving forward. So really briefly, we want to touch on what you might be looking for as you continue to check in on your ad. And we would recommend checking in on your ad. Um, maybe it depends on the length. If you're running an ad for a couple months, you probably don't need to check in every single day, but every few days just to make sure things are going well. If you are running a shorter ad that maybe runs for a week or two weeks, we'd recommend checking in probably every day, maybe even a, a few times a day in the beginning, just to make sure things are, are going smoothly. So when you're checking in on your ad, what you're looking for, uh, these three items, uh, spend, you wanna make sure that your spend is tracking. If you're running an ad for say five days for $100 and you're on day four and it's only spent 20, um, you may need to consider adjusting your ad. Uh, progress to goal. So pay attention to that objective. If you're running uh, an, uh, a campaign that's prioritizing impressions, make sure specifically that that number is doing really well. If another number like engagements maybe isn't, don't get too hung up on that. Really focus on what it is that you're prioritizing with this campaign and making sure that number is healthy. And then frequency. Frequency is one of the uh, numbers you'll see in the columns in Facebook Business Manager, and that just means the number of times that an individual has seen your ad. And if that number gets too high, we'd recommend taking a look at your audience size and expanding that. Um, really, there's you'll see a lot of numbers there, but if it starts to get close to or over 10, that frequency number, we'd recommend adjusting. And so once you have taken a look and maybe you determine that you do need to make some adjustments, some of the things you can do um, so if it isn't performing well, if it's not spending on track, um, your audience may be just too small and too targeted. Consider expanding that. Um, you might also want to consider adjusting your budget. Maybe you're trying to spend too much and too little time um, or too little in a span that is just too long. You want to make sure, um, referencing again, the, the slide where Mackenzie outlined sort of a, diff a few different ways to think about your, your budget. Make sure that the amount you're spending is lining up with the amount of time you're running uh, your ad. And then also creative. If your results aren't where you'd like them to be, then you probably need to adjust your creative. Um, and so that goes back to using some of the best practices that Josh mentioned um, in on each platform, considering that text may be good on some platforms, but not on others. Um, and so just to kind of wrap things up, um, if you would like to learn some more, the best places to do that um, is on each platform itself. They each have some resources for you. On Facebook, that's Facebook Blueprint. Uh, Twitter has their Flight School and Pinterest has their Academy and they have different courses. Um, a lot of them are very short that you can go through uh, to learn a little bit more uh, about some of the things we've discussed today and even some items that we maybe didn't get to today. In addition to those training resources, it's always just good to keep an eye on any updates from the channels and any creative resources. This um, was also included on webinar number two, um, just some resources to keep track of creative best practices as those change as new options are available. And again, we'll be sending this out so all of these links will be available to you once we do that. 
All right, um, so with the time we have left, are there any questions? I haven't seen any. Oh, yep. go ahead, Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were gonna say the same thing. I haven't seen any pop through. Awesome, we just have a couple little quick slides. Thank you all for being with us you know, today. And we have a couple of dates coming up. Yeah, I just wanted to call your attention to, so while this was the third session in our social media webinar series, we have a couple more Thursdays that I think you would all enjoy to be on your books. So coming up on October 29th, we have the, um, let's see, am I able to advance the screen or is the screen stuck? There we go, awesome. So cool, yes, on October 29th, we have the Tourism Summit. So this is going to replace the annual sales and marketing meeting that we typically have in person. It's gonna be virtual. And this year we're calling it the Tourism Outlook. Keep an eye out in your inbox. We're gonna be sending the registration link uh, either tomorrow or first thing Monday. And then November 5th, for those of you who are interested in uh, hearing about our co-op rollout for Q2 through Q4. As you might remember, we did already launch Q1 as we are in Q1 for our fiscal year, but we are going to dive into the Q2 through Q4 programs, plus show you the new co-op portal. So it's gonna be a really exciting thing. Keep an eye out, make note on your calendar for November 5th. And other than that, I think this is pretty much it. If you wanna be added to our This Month in Social Media email, please feel free to shoot me a note. There is my email. Um, but if you have any questions at all, anything that we've talked about in sessions one through three, myself, I know Mackenzie and Austin, we are more than happy to be a resource to you in your social journey. So feel free to reach out and I will do my best to get you an answer ASAP to any, any question you might have. Awesome. Well, and thank you guys. Oh. Sorry, Josh, you go. No, 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 I was just going to say, and that's it, Mackenzie. Thank you so much yeah. for co-presenting. And Austin, thank you so much. We, I really value our, you know, partnership and I know our partners do too, and just as much as we value them. So we are just one big, you know, uh, <laughs> one big social family and we're happy to have you yeah. all. We look forward to future engagements and um, yeah. Yes, thank you guys so much. Um, we will talk to you later and send through this recording um, later today or tomorrow. So thank you all for joining. We'll talk to you later. Thank you all.